What we've really looked at is how we can move robotics, which is your production line, into marketplaces that aren't production line. So how can we take uh, non-traditional labour sources uh, or, you know, or traditional uses of robotics as a labour replacement strategy and integrate that into marketplaces where we don't have a thousand off or a ten thousand off or a million off product run? Uh, WA is a very unique place in the sense that most of our work is one off. Small jobs, you know, we do one really big bucket, you know, we do a really big truck, you know, we don't do a production line of uh, Holden's, uh, GM's, you know, BMW's. And what we had to really do was make robotics which is targeted to really high precision. I mean, we, you know, they're capable of their repeated motion is amazing. Yet, in order to apply that into non-traditional markets, everything around that has to be controlled into this almost perfect world. So you have a point, you know, zero five millimeter repeatability, meaning the robot will go to that same spot each time. How can we make this source of, you know, potential labor become a smarter tool to actually address the market that we have? And as such, we had to take a fresh approach, you know, pop out of, outside of the box in thinking and go, well, how can we tackle this from a different angle? And what we started to do was build more intelligence into the robot arm. So we picked a you know, base platform that was capable of motion through a profile and then taught it how to do the job appropriately in the right way. Perfect, probably, example, uh, which is a medium production run, we uh, Ream Solar Heart, they do uh, solar water heaters that go on top of people's roofs. Um, the placing of those glass sheets, uh, and again, when we talk about what we've done here is we taught the robot how to identify where the glass sheet is and pick the glass sheet up off a roughly stacked pack. So rather than have the glass presented appropriately, tolerant stuff and put into position, we taught the robot to look at it, pick it up from the right spot and then place it perfectly into the right spot on the production improving quality. It's a very similar process and I choose this one right now just because it's one that's been marketed in the Apple iPhone 5 ads and they've been doing very, sim very similar processes there in selecting the right components to get the best tolerance fit. And it's that sort of approach where we allow and we accept imperfection because imperfection is the real world and we use the technology to address that imperfection in a real world strategy. And I guess that's, that's an example of what we're doing there. And I'll bring the iPhone 5 ad in because there's not many people that probably haven't, uh, you know, looked to get one of those shortly and they'll be able to see a fantastic video rendition of that right there.